so what we got here is one of our tracking tunnels and um, we're just going to check it. They give us an indication of the sort of stoughton rodent numbers. So it's a stoughton area and that doesn't bode well for the chick survival. So stoats are pretty incredible predators. They can have a litter of up to 14 kits. The female kits are then impregnated while still in the nest by the male stoat. So this shows that they can just outbreed kiwi. When they leave the nest, they can go up to 70 kilometers throughout the landscape. So it's uh, no wonder that none of the chicks are making it. So the number one threat to kiwi in Fjordland is stoats. The immediate team that I work in run a Tokoeka monitoring program at a place called Shy Lake in Western Fjordland. What's special about this program is that Fjordland is a huge wilderness, but most of it doesn't have any protection or predator control happening in it. And what we see so far in the study is that zero of our chicks have survived and most of those have been killed by stoats. If we don't control this threat, the vast majority of kiwi across most of our backcountry will decline and those populations will go extinct. One of the reasons we chose the area is that being peninsulas and having sea on three sides that will slow down the invasion of predators after our predator control and give protection to our native Taonga for longer. Nobody enjoys the fact that we have to kill stoats, but if you don't kill the stoats, they will be killing the kiwi and the lizards and the other birds. And we have an opportunity to step in and give a helping hand to them and to many other species that they live alongside. Today we're at the load site for the uh, Wet Jacket Peninsula's 1080 operation that we're carrying out. A significant amount of planning has gone into this operation over the last two years. So a lot of consultation with our iwi partners, um, but also concessionaires that use the area, stakeholders. The weather today is pretty much perfect for a 1080 operation. Good conditions in the, in the treatment area as well as at the load site, which is quite important. Um, you want minimal wind and, and no chance of rain really. If rain will dissolve the baits. We don't want that to happen prematurely. Um, we want the animals that we're targeting to have access to those baits for as long as possible. So the 1080 baits are a cereal bait. Um, this is the pre-feed, it's just non-toxic. We don't have a bait which targets stoats directly. So 1080 tracks the rats and then the stoats will come along and eat the dead rats and die of the secondary poisoning. Rats are neophobic, which means that they are basically naturally suspicious of anything new in their environment. So we pre-feed them with a non-toxic bait and that allows them to come along, they'll find that bait, they'll maybe have a little nibble, make sure that it doesn't make them feel sick, and then once they're comfortable with it, they'll go back and eat more. And that way, when we apply the toxic bait, the rats will be way more likely to eat that bait straight away and then we'll get a better result. For, for the pilots to be successful in the, applying the bait, we predetermine the area where the bait needs to be applied and then it is provided to the helicopters and they will load it up into their GI system which they operate in those aircrafts and that gives them a clear boundary of where the bait needs to go. It's incredibly accurate. So we, we're talking up to half a metre accuracy. So our native species have evolved without introduced predators and they basically don't have the skills to defend themselves. We are losing native biodiversity at an incredible speed and if we don't protect them, we're going to lose them. 1080 can have a big impact on large areas of conservation land over a much wider variety of species. Uh, and as you can see at Wet Jacket, um, in terms of the terrain, it's just not practical or safe for people to get out there in some of these steep environments to place traps. So we're here to start monitoring the first few chicks of the season. The first chicks to have been protected by our predator control work is a chance to see hopefully the fruits of all our labour. Uh, I think that's going to be really rewarding for me personally because it's going to be the first time that I can be holding an amazing little adorable kiwi chick and think not, oh man, am I even going to see you again, but instead think, oh great, like you have got a future buddy. <laughs>
We recently got the results back from our first tracking tunnel monitor after the 1080 operation and they were really encouraging. So we had zero rodents tracked in the areas where we put 1080 and most crucially for us and for the Kiwi we had zero stoats. We do need to treat it with a little bit of caution because what we need to make sure is that we can sustain this result through to the point where kiwi chicks are big enough to look after themselves. We know that we can be tracking few stoats but still losing heaps of our kiwi chicks. Stoats are just amazing predators and they're great at finding kiwi chicks. We need there to be very little or no stoats for the next six months and beyond until those chicks are big enough to be safe. That's Fortuna. My MTR, little, little, little look at the camera over here. Yeah. My other parents, they were just like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have nested on this super steep bank. And there's me yesterday wearing a t shirt. This is what it is. Well, that was perhaps expected, but still disappointing. No tick present in the nest. Um, so, you had Fortuna up that away? Let's do filibuster and do fortune on the way home, hey? Great idea. Cool. I know you were going to say the same thing, but <laughs> <laughs> that's real leadership. <laughs> We've seen from the trail camera that there is a chick in that nest. It's hatched and it's coming out in the evenings to forage for itself near the nest. So we want to get a transmitter on it. And so our plan is to barrel down to the nest, put on a million layers of clothing and sit there in the dark waiting for that chick to come out of the nest and when it does, we'll scoop it up and fit a transmitter and pop it back. Fingers crossed. the shortest and warmest weights I've ever had in a steak out. Right. So first up we're going to measure the bill. So with kiwi you need to be real careful handling the bill, it's very sensitive, it's not a weapon, it's a probe. 44.9 millimeters. So we're going to weigh in and in order to do that between the legs we put this little kiwi cuff And underneath, just in case it kicks out, it falls. When I first came to New Zealand to work as a volunteer in conservation, I didn't know that that was what I wanted to do. It's New Zealand sounded like a cool, adventurous, outdoorsy kind of place for me to go when I was young. But it was really that first year that I spent working in conservation that cemented that idea that actually, yeah, this is something that I want to do. One of the things that I find rewarding about being here is that we really can make a difference and we really can send things in the right direction. Oh, well, that's all I need. These chicks will get pretty regular checks and changes of their harness as they grow, so we don't need to put very much tape on. We'll be checking them monthly. We have to make sure that we study things at place and in different environments and pest ecologies and natural ecologies to make sure that what we think is going to work actually is working in the place we want to use it. We know that we can be tracking few stoats, but still losing heaps of our kiwi chicks. Stoats are just amazing predators and they're great at finding kiwi chicks. So the real acid test will be how many of those chicks survive. And that at the end is what it's all about. It's not about how many stoats we kill, it's about how many kiwi chicks we save. It's the first time I've had an opportunity to see them kind of visibly growing up. So they'd sort of turn into teenagers, they'd gone all gangly. After a 1080 drop, the biggest challenge is, is still the invasion. You can see the hole in the beech tree behind me where we just found the remains of T-Rex's chick. It's a classic stoke predation. It doesn't mean the season's at a loss, there's still some chicks alive. 